<laughs> oh, we are live. We are live. Well, there you go. Okay. So good morning, everybody. Sorry, we're a few minutes late. We've been having some technical issues. Yeah, that was me. All years are resolved. Uh, so I'm going to apologize to everybody in advance for the fact that um, I didn't realize this, but I'm my visual my, is, is, is freezing all the time on screen. So if I stop and look brain dead, but my words, my words will continue. Nothing I can do about it. We live in the Bermuda Triangle of the internet, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's more important people hear what we have to say. Yes. So anyway, I'm here this morning with, uh, sorry, Laura Hunter from Drop the Leash Dog Training. Mm -hmm. And I am here this morning with Celeste Gagnon who uh, does Facebook Lives with me all the time. And um, did our third, our third participant is gone, is she there? No, no, she's just sitting. Or we do you need to introduce Penny this morning because usually she just sits there and watches. But, I know. Um, we're gonna be talking about Penny quite a bit this morning. So we are talking today about leech reactivity in dogs. And uh, both of us have worked with lots and lots of people who have dogs with leash reactivity, and we have our own dogs with leash reactivity. Um, well, actually, my my dog the it, it extends way beyond just just the leash, yeah. but definitely a reactive dog. So um, Celeste, as I said, is Penny has Penny back there. Penny's how old now? Five. She's turning seven this month. Actually, on the weekend. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize that. I know. Um, Happy birthday, Penny. Um, <laughs> so Celeste has had Penny for seven years, and my reactive dog, Maddie, is uh, she just turned 10. So we've, we've been living this for a long time. So um, today I was going to talk, well, I am going to talk mostly about our program, but in the context of what we think reactive, dog need, reactive dogs need for help. Uh, but I had um, a bit of a learning curve of my own this week because when I put the information out about the program, um, I did a video, it's up on YouTube, and I put the posts up on Facebook, I got lots of people commenting back. And the comments were um, a bit of an eye-opener for me, and I'm not being judgmental or critical, um, I guess this is how most people think about reactivity, totally different than how you and I look at it, but we live it um, and yeah. we've lived it for many years. So um, I'm just gonna go over some of the comments I got. And again, this I'm not being critical. This is a teaching, this is a learning curve for me. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to fix this? So um, can we get this under control before I go on holidays? Uh, can I get some tips to pass on to my clients with leash reactive dogs? Uh, I need to fix this, but I don't want to change what I'm doing with my life, I guess. Um, and lastly, I know some of this, so I, I probably don't need the whole program. Um, so the common theme with all of those comments is that I think people see this as something that is... Um, not a quick fix, but seems relatively easy or fast to fix. And, and just the whole term fix, the whole, the, the concept of fixing is, it's not what we do. Um, yeah. and, and certainly, you know, um, if I can give people quick tips and solutions to, um, you know, solving reactivity, I wouldn't be on this live right now. I'd be writing up a really cool ebook on 10 to fix your dog and I'd be selling it for $20. So I wouldn't have to show up anymore. Um, millions of people could buy it and their dogs would be great. Um, so unfortunately, my answer to all of those questions would have to be no. No, I can't. I can't give people tips or strategies. I can't, you know, pass on tips and, and we can't fix it quickly. Um, you know, but leash reactivity, dog reactivity isn't any different than trying to uh, change any other behavior in dogs. There's no quick fix for anything. Um, and there's no guarantee how long it'll take. Behavior change happens over time. And so we can help people just on, on the fly with this. Um, you and I have been living reactivity with our dogs for 10 years. Um, I'm not going to start off by totally demoralizing anybody, but we're still working on it yes. um, because it's something that we're going to be working on as long as we have these dogs. It doesn't mean that we can't, that we don't have good lives with our dogs. It's just, it's an ongoing process. Um, 
you know, so the, the best I could do up front is to give people some management tools to try and prevent it from happening. Um, but management doesn't always fix um, fix things. <laughs> and, and again, here's me using the word fix. Um, you know, even if, if we're working with kids, um, you know, let's say you want to teach one of your kids to say please and thank you. Um, how many times and how many different situations do you have to coach your kids to learn to say please and thank you? I, I'm still working on mine. Um, <laughs> 36. Um, <laughs> So hope he's not listening. Um, you know, or, or let's, you know, you could, you could have to say it five, 50 times, 500 times, you know, it's something that you're trying to change behavior. It's ongoing and it takes time. Um, you know, people who don't have reactive dogs who come to our games program and the puppy program, how long does it take for them to teach their dog not to jump? Um, yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> you well, know, and then, and then when they learn it, then the dogs become a little bit older and forget everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <the> teenage years. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But it, it takes a long time and people yep. get really frustrated because it does take so long, but people take a long time to change behaviors as well. So, you know, we all behavior change needs us to a understand what's driving the behavior, b develop a plan to change it. And that's usually by either changing the environment or teaching an alternative behavior. And see, you have to practice and reinforce over time in many, many different situations because dogs do not generalize behaviors to different situations, you know. So it, it unfortunately is something that we can't do quickly, you know. So, you know, the first question I get when I'm talking to people is I, I just we stop the behaviors. How do we stop the behaviors? What do I do? How can I stop this? And we totally get that. We've been in those situations. You know, it's, it's stressful. It's embarrassing. It's inconvenient. Um, reactivity pretty much rules your life. If you have a reactive dog, where you go, and when you go, it, it certainly yeah. it rules that. And, <clears throat> and it can be socially isolating as you, you know, you start to avoid other people out in the world. You, you buy a dog and you think, wow, this is really cool. I, I'm going to go on lots of walks, going to hang out at dog parks. I'm going to go to agility class. And all of a sudden, all that gets kind of wiped out, taken away. You know, you know that you, yep. you were there for a while before yep. you found me and we found each other. And because <laughs> um, you went to classes with Penny and then you you came to me for agility. Yeah, I think I came to you. She was um, just over a year and a half when we yep. started agility. Wow. Um, and before that, she'd taken I had taken two courses with a, and a private with one trainer and then um, two other classes with another trainer for a sport, not training, training. Yeah. yeah. Just to try to focus her. Yeah. Yeah. But so I'm, I'm, things by the year, by eight, one and a half years old and then, and then yeah. you. So, but, I, but I'm really impressed that you actually did show up because she was pre-reactive. Yes. Back then. And yes. I'm impressed that you showed up for agility class. <laughs> a lot of courage, if you You ask. know, uh, honestly, I think that agility, it wasn't reactive training, but yeah. it made, it helped. Yeah. It yeah. did help with the reactivity. If that yes. makes, And I mean, we can get into that later, but. Yeah, yeah absolutely it did. But yeah. I think a lot of people with reactive dogs are not taking that, that jump out in the world. They're hiding. Right in their house. Like I had a lady phone me a couple of weeks ago and she was in tears and she said, I feel like a horrible person. I can't, I literally can't bear to take my dog out for a walk anymore. Yeah. That's what happens. So, yeah. so I mean, I, I know that feeling too. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I totally understand why everybody just wants the behavior to go away um, so they can get out in the world. But there, every, I think, and this is what surprised me. And again, we live with it. So we understand it is that, Everybody needs to understand that reactivity is not so much a behavior as is, an, well, is largely an emotional response um, mm -hmm. of emotion driving the behavior. And, and I think, I guess a lot of people don't understand that. They just see it as bad behavior. Um, but it is really important 
that people understand that it is emotion. I'm saying it again, it's emotion that drives the reactive response. Yeah. So if you look at the two big reasons for reactivity, the first one is fear. There's an emotion right there. So your dog is, is terrified, you know, and there's, they go out, there's a trigger. Let's just, for the sake of ease, say it's afraid of other dogs, which both of our dogs are. Yeah. Um, so they immediately want to increase distance between themselves and that scary trigger, but they can't, they're constrained on a leash. So because your dog cannot get himself to a safe distance, the only option he has is to, ironically enough, he's got a choice of fight or flight. He can't have flight. So he, ironically enough, he has to make himself look scary and send the scary thing away. Um, you know, so you have to address that fear and help him feel safe in order to reduce that behavior. Yeah. Um, right. And, you know, people look at frustration as less of an emotional thing. I'm not sure why. Um, but if you have a dog who's social and really wants to get to play with other dogs, same issue. He's constrained on the leash. He's frustrated because he can't access the resource. So the lunging and barking are simply an expression of frustration. It's like having a small child and you're walking him past, you know, three toy stores and he wants to go into the toy stores and you say, we don't have time. You're holding him by the, the wrist. Hopefully he's not on a leash. Um, <laughs> well, that happens and, too. Yeah, I know. And he's just frustrated and, 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 you know, throws a bit of a temper tantrum because he literally doesn't know what to do with all that emotional frustration. And I, this is just my own personal opinion, but, um, I think that if a dog is repeatedly exposed to something that predicts nothing but frustration, I don't see how we can't help but develop a negative response to other dogs. It's, it's like, oh my God, I, one more toy store I can't go into. I can't, I don't even want to see a toy store anymore. Yeah. You know, I can't deal with it. It just makes me feel bad. So I, I think that that frustration is just as much of an emotional response as the fear is really, or becomes. All right. Mm -hmm. But, I don't have any scientific research to back that up. That's just what I think. So, you know, I'd agree. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yes, we do have to teach our dogs that they can offer us a more acceptable behavior. Absolutely. Cause you gotta get out in the world. Right. But you also have to change the emotion or at least you have to help them deal with it in some way. And, and, you know, even if people understand that, they don't necessarily know how to do it. Yeah. Um, and why should they? They're not dog trainers, right? Um, so, you know, you've got to convince your fearful dog that you've got your back, their back, and you're going to, you know, not put them into situations that are scary. And if that happens, you're going to save them from those situations pronto. And, you know, it's the same with the frustrated dog. You've got to show them that you can get them out of that unpleasant situation and provide them something, some better alternative that is certainly less stressful than than just being totally frustrated. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just going to add to that because you were saying how people don't really know how to deal with, with this kind of training. I hear you. Um, she wants to add to it too. You know, she's got her two cents she wants to put in. Um, but I think that people also don't know how to recognize the difference between frustration and fear all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, was, honestly, for us, it's hard sometimes. It, it is hard sometimes. I mean, I'm still... Yes. Back and forth about Penny. Yes. In different situations. I'm like, I'm not sure this time what this is. Yes. I totally. Yeah. yeah. We've talked a lot about yeah. Penny. Well, that's just, another, that's another situation where, yeah. you know, coming into somebody who knows what they're looking for will help that's you. That's right. And, and you and I have also said over the years that the more we learn about reactivity, the messier it gets. It's true. Because, you know, those, when I say fear or frustration, that's simplification, you know, yeah. um, there, there are dogs that are just proximity sensitive, you know, um, actually Rosie would be one of those, she, she's like the happiest dog in the world, totally gray around other dogs until they get in her face and then she sounds like Cujo, but nobody considers her a reactive dog. She's yeah. just out of my space. We don't think about it. I don't yeah. actually think she's as emotionally upset as certainly Maddie is. Maddie is um, definitely more fearful, but um, Penny, we're, we're always just, we're never quite sure about Penny, right? Yeah. You know. yeah I, missed, I couldn't answer it. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> selective, <laughs> selective reactivity. <laughs> 
So, um, you know, Penny, we, we classed her as a fearful dog, but we also know that, you know, the diagnostic criteria we often use for fear of frustration is can they play with other dogs off leash? Right. And most frustrated dogs can, but Penny's also okay with other dogs off leash, but we- But she doesn't want to play. No, no. no that's well, that's but the she's, difference, but, but she can be with them. Yeah, yeah but she's, and she's seven years old. So yeah. yes, we're, we're always rethinking whether Penny is, we're, we're on the, we're definitely on the fence about her. So it's yeah. hard for us too. It's, it's hard for us. Fortunately, we have a system that kind of addresses everything. Mm -hmm. um, thank God. Um, so, um, you know, the question is, so what's so wrong about eliminating that behavior? Because, you know, if we, we know people, we know that people have done that. Um, and the dog has appeared to be just fine. And, and so the question is, well, you know, we got rid of the behavior. Now the dog's okay. The dog looks fine. Um, yeah, there are, um, you can do that. You can definitely do that. Um, there are programs out there that will do that for you. There are training programs that you can access. Um, and yes, the upside is that they can make the behaviors go away, sometimes even in one session. I've heard of that. First session, dog was totally cured. Um, but if you want a behavior to diminish or go away or disappear, that has to be through correction or punishment. There's no other way to make, well, there's extinction, but no one's going to wait that long. Um, and then... <laughs> not going to work in that in this case anyway and there's habituation and you and I both know habituation doesn't work either um so you know people are using corrections or aversive methods to get rid of those behaviors so every time the dog sees the trigger is exposed to the trigger and, and they start to respond you you can shout at your dog you can correct them verbally you can pop the leash you know people have even used e-collars to do that um, but yes, the dog will quickly stop displaying the behavior that brings relief for the owner. But the downside is your dog can't tell you anymore that he's upset. Yeah. So, you know, part of the, the drama of those reactive responses is that, um, yes, um, we're trying to tell you how we feel we're upset. So, you know, the dog learns that in that situation, he can no longer tell anybody how he feels. Mm -hmm. And so they shut down emotionally. Um, it's called learned helplessness. And people don't recognize learned helplessness because your dog can look perfectly fine. Um, that's, that's the catch right there. I remember years ago seeing Maddie in a situation like that, where she ended up in a situation with a ton of dogs around her um, and none of them were quiet. And um, she just completely shut down. She couldn't deal with it. And everybody would say to me, oh, my goodness, look at that. Um, she's fine. She's great. And I, yeah, because she looked great, but she wasn't. She just couldn't deal with it. So she just shut down completely. So mm -hmm. the dog still is upset, but they're just not going to show it. And to, in my opinion, that really destroys um, any trust your dog has in you, that, yes. that relationship with you. You know. If you were going to put that a human analogy to that, I was trying to think of one the other day. So maybe you're afraid of snakes and your friend says, hey, don't worry, I got your back. I'll get you over this. So, you know, they get somebody to show up with a snake and the snake guy's bringing the snake towards you and you start yelling, oh, my God, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this. So your friend next to you, you know, shut up and like smacks you in the arm and goes, stop, stop, stop. Um, you know, how are you going to feel about that? Um, yeah. I might shut you up for a minute. Um, eventually, I've. <laughs> knowing me, I would just go off and smack the guy and smack my friend in the head. But you're certainly not going to trust them to help you. And they didn't make you feel any better. Just because right. you stop yelling doesn't make you feel any better about the snake. So there's yeah. not a lot of benefit to this. There's only a downside, I think. So you know? just because you said you'd turn around and smack your friend in the face, that actually is, a, no, but that's a, that's a good mm -hmm. example because you shut somebody down enough, eventually you know, they could snap. Yep. And that yes. could be for a dog just as much as a, as a Laura. <laughs> I am a reactive dog. <laughs> I have no social skills. Well, you're totally, absolutely right. You know, and, and you hear about dogs redirecting because they're yep. just so, they don't know what to do. You yep. know? 
So, um, so I am not a proponent of just shutting behaviors down. I, I just, I just think there's too much of a, a downside on that. Um, so the other question is, well, okay, so I can't shut the behavior down. Is there anything else I can do to move the process along quickly? No. Um, sorry. Nope. Again, you're working well, with emotional response. I mean, quickly is subjective, but mm -hmm. consistency would be this, quicker. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Yeah. This is true. But, but I know people have said to me, I know you mean overnight or by like the end of the weekend kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I, uh, you know, somebody said to me last summer, they said, you know, the dog is super reactive, but I got to get them into it. We're going away. We booked a trip. I got to get them into a boarding kennel in, in, in a month. Well, I can't, I can't yeah. do that in a month. Like, I, I don't think that's going to happen in a month, especially when they say super reactive, you know? Yeah. And then you put them in a kennel for a month and you come back and you have to start all over again. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I don't think in in the world of um, mental health or, you know, if, if you have a problem and you have, you're going to get help for it, um, you know, nobody's going to guarantee you you're going to solve that quickly. Humans take just as much time to, you know, yeah, to it's a process. emotional responses as, as, as adults do, I know. Yep. So what we do do in the program is we do use a science-based process called counter conditioning, which changes hopefully your dog's response over time um, from negative to positive. Um, again, I say hopefully, I say probably over time because every dog is different. And I don't honestly think that we can completely change our dog's, um, our, our dog's emotional response. Not, not completely, I don't think. We'll talk about that later too. Um, the other reason it, that it takes time to resolve leash reactivity is because there are habits involved. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, I think a lot about habits these days, a lot more than I used to. Um, by the time I see most dogs, they are completely stuck in a habit of response that is not effective for anybody. Um, you know, Maddie, Maddie has been stuck in a habit of response on and off for, for, for years, years. Um, but that's our fault because we we live in a situation where we don't have to address reactivity every day. So, you know, and we're busy and I've got two other dogs in the program here. I'm making excuses. So, you know, at times we let it slide um, and then she goes back to her old habits, which mm -hmm. is what also happens. But a later moment, we'll talk about that. Um, so the, the thing about the habit habits is habits are really strong. We it's very hard to break, and the dog th actually thinks that response is working for them. So both I'm sure both Penny and Maddie thought forever that you know lunging and barking was the answer because it usually did work in some way. They got to move away, or the other dog got to move away. It did work, and they've been practicing it. They practice it, you know, for a lot of time. So by the time dogs come to see me, how long have they been practicing that reactive habit? Um, a long time. And the owners, and again, no judgment, no criticism here. Um, just we understand owners are stuck in a habit of responding to. Uh -huh. Because I see it. I see it here, especially when you're stressed. Um, you fall back. I, I saw it in you, you a million years ago. Yeah first started right where we all start pulling on the leash or clutching our dog and mm -hmm. and trying to physically control the dog because we just can't think of what else to do yep. but that is ineffective and it's also a habit that most people develop and again it's it's not the best habit but i we get it we, we know where you're coming from yep. totally right they don't know what else to do so yeah it's a reflex and yeah. and to be completely honest if i'm tired or irritated a day, that'll pop up again, even now. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that's sure. interesting. Yeah. If I'm like, if I just, like, it's not, it's not often, but sometimes if I'm just really frustrated or tired or I have a lot on my mind and I'm walking Penny and she starts up, it's like, just, let's just go, go home kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's, the, yeah. I mean, patience runs out and it's normal. Well, that's it too. Is uh, yeah. I, I definitely even find with Maddie, patience runs out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. They they push all our buttons. They're yeah. not trying to, but they do. You no, know? and you're human. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. So what you have to do, what we do, is we take the human and the dog out of the oh. situation. 
situations that trigger the unwanted habits. Yeah. And we try to convince people to do that as much as possible. You and I have talked endlessly to people about don't take your dog for a walk if you think it's going to be an issue. You yeah. know, people feel guilty and, you know, we give them alternatives and we try and talk them to it. But we know what that feels like because we feel guilty if we don't take our dogs out. So we know all this. So you have to take both the human and the dog out of the situation as much as possible, though, because the only way to build a new habit mm -hmm. of response is in a new and neutral situation where the owner and the dog can be successful. So. Yeah. You know, two things there. They have to go, they have to be in a situation where they're not practicing the behavior. They have to be in a situation where they can build now a new reinforcement history of success, which can turn into a habit. So what we ultimately, simplistically, will, I'll say that what we want is that the dog turns back to you instead of lunging and barking. And you have acquired good reinforcement mechanics. So you are going to reinforce your dog on a loose leash. And then the two of you calm, calmly walk off into the sunset. That was a simplistic, idealistic explanation. Yes. But you also, you, you it can happen. You are the person who needs to be here today because <laughs> I've seen you do that. Yes, it can happen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. People need to know it can happen. For sure. Yeah. You, you guys are like the poster children for, uh, <laughs> for um, success in this program and, and also Jocelyn and Buck as well. Who yes. I've seen with. videos. Very yeah. impressive. Oh, amazing. 20 yeah. feet. But yes. I'll say for, for Penny and Buck, you know, it's consistency. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. You want something to happen quickly it'll happen faster if you're consistent yes yeah hope you know what remind me of that in about two more three more sentences no, okay <laughs> that, that you just brought up a good point for me to talk about but anyway back to our process so you and your dog practice on neutral distractions things that do not elicit that response until you're both working back together as a team and and your responses are faster they're more fluid they're more automatic so that's step one so once you've reached that point, step two, then we get you to work under controlled conditions in real life locations. Um, we start for most of this is local because obviously I'm now offering this as a one-to-one -one private in-person program mm -hmm. um, because you and I both realized that online wasn't going to work for it. Um, so we do it here and so we use my dogs and we have control of the entire situation here. We can control the distance and the intensity and what else is going on around. And um, so that you and your dog can practice while staying under threshold. That is yes. so important because you have to be able to think through mm -hmm. The first several times you're going to be exposed to a dog. Mm -hmm. So we only increase that proximity and the intensity of the trigger very, very gradually. And you only do it as the dog can be successful. And then in step three, we take it out into the real world, like the real, real world, into different situations. And in that case, we can't control all the variables. All right. But we still have to get out there. And so we we have some very specific places that we start everybody where we know we have better chance of success. So that seems like a pretty straightforward three step program. Um, you know, so, you know, I'm sure there are a couple of people who have said, and why do I need a trainer for that? It seems pretty straightforward. I can probably find this stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Sure. And actually you can, yeah, the, like the activities that we, the games that we play in the program, those activities, you can find those all over the place because they were put out there years ago and everybody's using them. So yeah, you can totally find those activities. Um, you know, there's so many positive reinforcement trainers that are using those activities um, because they work, they're good. And we all, you know, there's, there's not a, massive amounts of variation in dog training world amongst good trainers because mm -hmm. we're using science-based stuff. We can explain it from a science-based point of view. We know it works. We know it's positive. We know we can get big reinforcement out of it. So we all are out there doing the same sort of stuff really, you yeah. know, which makes, which proves it works. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, <laughs> none of us would be using it. 
So, um, but, um, and it, actually you might even see somebody, a video of somebody working through steps with a dog, like here's 15 seconds of step one, step two, step three, right? But knowing how to use them in that systematic progressive way, I don't think your average dog owner can do that. Right. Um, and to know when to move on, yeah. when to drop back, when to hold steady, I don't think that's easy. And to tweak the activities um, or, or, you know, what we're doing in a different situation so that they work, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's just a little tweak that changes everything. And I had that with Buck a couple of weeks ago because it was falling apart. And I made a suggestion to Jocelyn and she was trusting enough to go with it and changed everything, changed everything. The dog had his best day ever. Um, so, and, but, and so that's was, another thing. It's changing for a situation, but it's also sp dog specific. Yes. Yes. Every dog is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not something that I would use in a heartbeat a, a million years on with Maddie. Right. Um, but I know I thought, well, it'll probably work for Buck because he's a different dog. Mm -hmm. um, and even I wasn't sure, but I was confident enough in this stuff that I could do that. Yeah. You know, and, and so, yeah, to know what works best for each dog and owner. And, you know, we, you and I have taught the same basic activities in the Games to Train program. The Games to Tra Train program is, is a simple program um, because most of the dogs, that, well, all the dogs that come in have to be simple. Um, a lot of them have a bit of connection with their owner. You know, we're not worried about, you know, them going over threshold so much, although some of them are very pro-social. <laughs> Yes. That. But <laughs> we know how hard it is for people in games to learn the mechanics, although we, we've tried to make it as easy as possible, because this is not what people do with their lives. Yeah. Um, you know, like, honestly, I, I drive a car. I know how to fill the windshield fluid thing. I know how to turn the car on and drive it. Um, you know, I know some basics about my car um, enough that I can get through life in my car. But if something goes wrong, I, I don't know how to figure out what to do. I don't know how to figure out what caused it. I don't know how to figure out how to get to the problem or how to put a plan together to fix it. Yeah. That's, why I have, that's why I have Randy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's my mechanic. Like I, yeah. I just call Randy. I, I don't know. You know, so we're asking people who are not dog trainers to actually kind of become a bit of a dog trainer with your dog. So it's not that easy. So no. you, need, you need somebody who can just help you. And the point that you brought up a few minutes ago was consistency. I also need to be there to um, just bug the daylights out of people to stay with the program yeah. and in a nice way. Yeah. Because I think the big problem with the online stuff was we did make it simple, but you you can't connect in the same way you don't know what people are doing you don't know if they are practicing or where they've gotten to yeah. like i can tell who's practiced in the games program two seconds after they come in the arena so if any, yes. of, if any of our students are listening i hope you heard that i know who's <laughs> by watching so it's true it's and this stuff is you know people with reactive dogs are coming from a real place of discouragement so they really, really, really need somebody to support and coach them more than yeah. the dog. If, if the people, if I can get the people going and on board and enthused and feeling confident and, and competent, the dog will fall into place. Yeah. I really do believe that, you know. There, there's another, um, another plus to going to see you mm. instead of online. And that's, I mean, you're going to be practicing at home in your safe, safe space, so you're good. But mm. to take it out into the world, if they come to you, it is also a controlled safe space, mm. but it's not familiar. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So exactly. that that's mm. actually a huge comfort to the person, too, because they can learn and focus without having to worry about the mm. environment that they're in. Yeah. Because they know it's set up properly for them and their dog yeah. at that moment. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so, I think it's so scary for people just to go out there yeah. and, and, you know, and, and kind of, Oh my God, what do I do in this situation? And it, 
while they're figuring out what they should be doing, they also have to worry about the dog. Exactly. Uh, you know, it's not like the dogs are just sitting there calmly at their side. Like I've seen Buck come out of the car here and holy mackerel. He's yeah. like, ready yeah <laughs> you know like, he's like oh my god what's out here you know I, I and he's huge and he's a big boy you know um so that's even it's even more complicated when you've got to deal with the dog while thinking about what you're doing yourself yeah you know? and so that's why there needs to be all that repetition over and over and over again you know people say to us oh well you, you, we've heard this before you guys look so good when you do it well hmm. how many thousands of times have we done it yeah don't think about it anymore but my job isn't to look good with people's dogs. It's to help them be good with their dogs. Yeah. Oh, and that, that's, that's everything in this program. Yeah. So having said that, when we start to work here and out in the world, I don't even ask people now to work with their dogs. I start. I do it first mm -hmm. because I can set the dog up for some successful repetitions right away but people have to, more importantly, people have to see what it looks like. In yes. That. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. She's just agreeing with me. <laughs> she's on my back. She's um, very chatty today. <laughs> and, and I think people need that. Like, I, I can't imagine just, you know, uh, having somebody get out of their car here and, and you know, Brett's standing somewhere with Rosie and I go, okay, you know, jump into action here and get your dog. They wouldn't even know where the distance would be. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the other big skill, which you have probably, I think you're even better at this than I am, is, is body language. Mm. Like you told me you saw Penny's ear twitch. You knew she was like going over a threshold. Yeah. Like, yeah. Blew my mind. Um, people are, and, and people are so fried in this situation. They can't even look at, look to the dog's body language. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's easier for me to do it and show them. They can watch, and then I hand them the leash and I coach them through it. And sometimes I'll take them back to more of a distance because I I can work a little bit in further because um, I you know I know where the threshold line is, but I'll take them back so that they don't have to worry about hitting that line. You know, mm -hmm. so they have to. You, people, you know, there's there's this whole thing about errorless learning. There's a lot about that, and you know, you should never make a mistake. And I, I you know people are going well no people need to make mistakes so there's the two sides people are always going to make mistakes because nothing's perfect yeah, i was gonna say that's pretty impossible yeah but but i do believe that you're only going to grow confidence if people are successful so they they need a ton of practice in success and then if they want to move four inches closer to the other dog and that's where they're comfortable i'm good with that although yeah. we do have to start pushing a little bit but you need somebody to do that with you, I think. Yeah. And and even if it's not our program, if you if you're gonna find another program, if you're listening here and you don't even live here, somebody from somebody from Minnesota tried to sign up the other day. Oh, <laughs> on a referral. <laughs> she paid and everything, and then she called me back. She said, "You're not in Minnesota, are you?" I said, "No, it's a long drive." So, okay. so so if there are people listening who you know are looking for a program for reactive dogs. Hopefully, we're giving you also information about what you need to find out about yes. the program and what somebody else is going to offer you in a program. Uh, you know, I, like honestly, I'm sorry, I don't believe that it's as effective to a work in a training facility with a group of dogs. And I know there are a lot of people that do that, and maybe their you know trainers are constrained to that situation. But I honestly think it is more productive to get out into the world in a neutral environment first and then generalize and then do the same thing with the dog. Because I don't think that people and dogs can generalize easily from a training hall to, to the real world. I think that's really scary and difficult for people. Even the games people are having trouble getting some yeah. of the games People have trouble getting their dogs out of the house. They say the dogs are great in the house. We still can't get out the door. So we give them strategies to do that. But I, I really think that um, that this needs to happen in the world. Well, um, it's a more practical way of learning too, because it's gonna it's gonna impact you in your day to day life, whereas a classroom won't necessarily. 
No, no, no. And, and as I said, the games people, some of them are having a hard time getting their dogs to, to listen to them out in the world. So the games people need one-to-one -one coaching a lot for this as well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's always been the, the way. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, well, I try, you know, when you came to me, um, I remember the moment I, I was standing in the arena and I think you were having trouble with Penny and I, I just said, I'm going to help her fix this, right? Even though you're here for agility and I started sort of feeding you things and ideas and stuff. Um, but when I first started learning about reactivity, I didn't, I did go to a class and, and the woman who taught the class is wonderful. Um, both of them, one of them is a, a friend of mine now, but it wasn't place for Maddie she yeah. like he was a dog who needed at that point in her life five football fields away okay. and and, and it, it, it didn't it didn't it just didn't work for her so it might work for other dogs I, I don't know I don't know you know but uh I just I just think it's it's better out in the world I really do yeah you know? I agree and and, and I you know yeah yeah so mm -hmm. um okay so to sum up I'm kind of losing my thought process here um you know it's 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 just like all other training. You you've got to manage to prevent mistakes. You've got to build the new responses, which become habits and neutral situations. Um, so you're always um, in the beginning training for the situation, not in the situation. That's our big motto here. And you always have to work at the level where the dog can be successful. You know, gradually introduce them to real world and controlled manner for success. And then you have to generalize that success everywhere. So um, it's not, as we have been trying to say, it's not a short-term project. Um, so having said that, one of the big questions I get all the time is, can you guarantee at the end of this program that my dog's reactivity will go away? Um, sometimes people say, can you guarantee that it'll just go away completely? Um, no, no, we can't. And um, like all behavior, um, it's not going to be a hundred percent successful because behavior is never a hundred percent. Um, yeah. but you know, we're here, um, you know, and we can both tell you, um, that you can reduce it, but you can never completely eradicate it because dogs are like humans. They're not perfect. And as you were describing earlier, you have moments when you fall back into old patterns. So do the dogs. Exactly. Yep. Every dog's different. Every handler is different. Every situation is different. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that for, in, in terms of you and Penny right now. Um, you know, some people have tons of time to devote to the dog. They can go and practice every day, everywhere. You know, they work from home or whatever. Um, some people work long hours. They don't have the time. So it might be harder because they can't be as consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you... Um, I've had an interesting time with your dog. You have always, you've had the time to be consistent with your dog. Yes. You, always. Yeah. Um, and I've seen you standing in front of the arena talking to me or somebody else and you're playing the games with Penny and you don't even think about the fact that you are playing the games. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's become a way of life for you just as it has for some, some, you know, some of my people, it's a way of life now, not everybody. Um, but you, um, the problem you had was that you lived in a very dog congested area. Dog. Yeah. Dog and people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then you moved. Yes. <laughs> for the dog. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't talk that way about your history. Um, but um, you had a total change yes. in your dog because of that move. Not that we're telling people that they do have to move. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it this morning. Um, so you got to go back. Okay, so Celeste moved to a small town um, on the Ottawa River. And your situation is totally different, right? Yes. You want to just explain how different it is? I went, well, I went from a very densely populated area um, in Markham. Cornell. In Cornell, which is, yeah. you're practically living on top of people, nice. um, to a, a rural town. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm yeah. surrounded by space and nature and 
I mean, we're still in a little subdivision so that we have neighbors, we share fence lines with people, but it's, that's a lot more open. But there are still lots of dogs there. Everybody has dogs here. Yes. So I, but, I would say there's more dogs here than where I used to be. But more spread out. But more spread out. But you were totally brilliant. You know, you didn't even realize how brilliant what you were told. <laughs> told you. In that when you moved there, mm -hmm. you started the games all over again. Yeah. Started using the games all over again from scratch. Yep. And you used them in the house and then you mm -hmm. took them out and you played all the games with Penny. Yep. And you have tried to avoid dogs and tried to avoid, you know, triggers. And you played the games in neutral areas and you developed a new habit of response in a neutral area. And then you gradually started getting out further and meeting more dogs, right? Yeah. It was totally the perfect. And, and I know you keep saying it's brilliant, but I'll be honest. The reason I did that was because I was afraid that moving here with the dogs that were here, the all the new dogs and new environment and everything else, I thought that it would be a disaster for her. Interesting. And so that's why I was like, well, I'm going to try to, you know, I'm going to have to start from scratch because I didn't know how she would react. And I assumed the worst because when you have a reactive dog, you automatically assume the worst. Yeah. We're not optimists. No, no, not. but yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it was the right thing to do. Um, my motivation wasn't necessarily being proactive. It was more pessimistic, but it did. It worked. Yes. And yeah. when you told me a couple of weeks ago, I said, how close can Penny get to other dogs? Yeah. And you said, what did you say? It was like ridiculous. It's, it's within six feet. We're from passing on a path. Yeah. I know. Because they're and like horse trail, seriously. or I guess up here, it's snowmobile trail width, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and like the Penny I know, this is yeah. not the Penny I knew, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's on a loose leash, guys. Ah, that's the important part. Yes. Yeah. It's not me holding her next to me, walking past at six feet. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so it can it's, happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, yeah. It's good yeah. To, for people to know that. Um, you know, um, you know, so people say, well, if you can't guarantee you're going to fix it, what, what, what are you going to, what do you have to offer us? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, well, the truth um, that you will have the skills when you finish this program, you're not getting out of it until you have the skills and, 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 and the knowledge and the confidence to, to keep working with your dog um, because it is an ongoing project, you know, um, it is. yeah, even for our games, people, we say, you know, and then in six weeks, you know, we've shown you in the arena how to work with your dog off leash. Yeah. But are you going to take that out in the world in six weeks? And no, you're not. No, it's it's going to take. No, a while. you're not done. And I mean, even now, if we have a bad day, then the next day I'll make it easier for her by doing games again. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what we do. We give you stuff to yeah. work on. You know. You, you learn how to troubleshoot. Yeah. So there are a couple of um, a couple of things that we get out of this program that people wouldn't think about. And number one um, is aside from the fact that you'll be able to have all the skills to work with your dog. And and let me say this, that, that mm. your dog is going to blow that blow it occasionally, but after you've been through the program, your dog blows it. You don't get so you, you've got, you, you're not going to get as upset as you used to, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, uh, you know, we blew that one, bad timing, you know, dog jumped out, like, walking Maddie down the road the other day. She's great now. There's a million dogs around here now. She's okay. But one popped up from behind a wood pile. And I jumped. She jumped, you know. Yeah. And, and then I worked her out of it. And, like, I don't care. It's fine. You know, yeah. I'm sorry I missed it. Mm -hmm. But neither of us could do anything about it. So, you know, we just, we deal with it. And people have the confidence to move on. That's right? the thing. I think yeah. that once your pers your confidence as a handler grows, once you can start yeah. troubleshooting and, and figuring things out, yes. um, your dog will be mm -hmm. more confident too. Yeah. But also what happens is that the, um, the connection between the two of mm. you grows. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was listening to, um, I don't know if you've heard of him, Kamal Fernandez. He's a really well-known trainer. 
And he was talking about a client he had with a really extreme dog and had been to other trainers and they couldn't do anything. And it was a fearful dog. And he started working with this woman and her schnauzer and the schnauzer won a Crufts and in agility. And he said he didn't care about the fact they wanted agility. He was watching them. And he said the connection between the two of them standing there at the end of it was unbelievable. Yeah. And, I've watched you, everybody who watches you run your dog. This is like suck up to Celeste, but I've got to say, <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. I've got to say, it because I see the same thing with Jocelyn and Bach, when she gets out of the car and she starts working him, the connection that you should see them, Celeste, it's like they're dancing with each other. It's unbelievable. Aww. There's never anything but a loose leash. But you had that same connection with Penny in agility. And everybody used to say, oh my God, look at them run. They're beautiful. Because you have to work so closely with your dog. And, and the games aren't just something you play for 10 minutes a day. Every time we go out on a walk, we're playing games with our dogs. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the connection is amazing that you get. So I'll, I'll say this for people who are feeling frustrated about um, their dogs and their situation. You do this kind of training with your dog um, and your relationship with that dog will be extremely strong. And that in itself is incredibly rewarding. And it's not something that you think about when you start the training because you're thinking, I just want to fix this problem. Yeah. But because you're working and learning to read your dog and learning to understand that your dog is their own little being with their own feelings and thoughts and that you are a caregiver, really, and you're trying to help them through things, um, that relationship is just amazing that you come up with. Yeah, you could become a team. And, yeah. and it's not just our program. It's any good program. Yeah. Do that for you and your dog. If, yeah. if, because you have to work more intensely with your dog. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, not to plug a completely different course, because I know we're talking about the reactivity, but you have a dog with reactivity. And if you have the opportunity to do a sport or mm-hmm. another kind of training with them that is fun for you, fun for the dog, um, that speeds up some of this reactivity because you are learning to read and play with your dog. You are yeah. enjoying your dog instead of working only. And yeah. if it's a sport like agility, your dog is gaining confidence, yeah. which is all extremely helpful and can go hand in hand with the reactivity training. Yeah. But I remember um, sitting on a Zoom one night with a group. Um, it might have actually been the group that Jocelyn and Bach, I think the mom was in that group. And, and all of the owners were complaining about all the badly behaved, <clears throat> I don't know what you want to call them, non-reactive dogs out in the world and how great their dogs were. And I just I just sat there and laughed because they were, they were just, it, I, it was good for them to be able to actually do yeah. that because our dogs are always perceived as being so badly behaved but that's like uh, what did Kamel uh, say the other day it's like one slice of, of time in, yeah. in a whole continuum you know when they're not being reactive most reactive dogs if they they're in any sort of a program with their owners they look great because yeah. we have to work so closely with them like of my three dogs Maddie's often the easiest one um, to, to have with us on a walk because she's just so good. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, there is, there, there's always, uh, I hope, a positive outcome. You know, if you put the time in, mm-hmm. if you keep incorporating the activities into your walks, you, you, you're, it, you've got to see an improvement. It, you know, it's just, uh, it's just consistency and time and, and dedication, I hate yeah. to say. No, you I know? agree. So, so we have a couple questions that are good. Um, Dill asked if there's a, a point to taking a preemptive reactive dog course. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by pre- so you mean I think she, preventive? Yeah, pre- preemptive meaning before, before there's any signs of reactivity, but I think that's kind of what a games course would be. Yeah. Games in games that we, we teach dogs to ignore distractions and turn yeah. back to their owners. We're like, honestly, I think that is the, I'm, I'm now starting to think that's the most important skill anybody can ever teach their dog. So we're now working on that in puppy class. Yeah. You know, we started teaching them in puppy, we started teaching the games class in puppy class. So honest to God, all the 10 week old puppies 
were learning turn and goes and they're learning the orientation game on leash and they're learning to look at that game and they all got yeah. it. And I said, because puppy owners, it's, that's where I need to start for preventive because every puppy owner just automatically and naturally, because they're so happy their puppies are social, let them pull to meet other dogs and people because it's, that's what you've been told. Let your dogs meet other dogs and people. Yeah. But then one day you, you know, your puppy's no longer 10 pounds, they're, you know, 45 pounds and people say, no, sorry, you can't do that anymore. So I do see people coming um, into reactive from that were puppies with us originally. So it's super, yeah. Sally, you have to do this with your new puppy. This is because Sally, <laughs> Sally, she's okay. getting puppy. Yeah, Remember. Sally, Sally actually had a, had a good question too about do those classes lessen reactive responses, which I think they probably do because you're avoiding bad habits. Yes. Um, she's asking, or is it partly encoded? Which I think maybe it is partly encoded too in some breeds genetically. I mean, the breeding. Yeah, I. you know what? They're, well, certainly the herding dogs. We didn't, yeah. even, we didn't even get a chance to touch the herding dogs in this. We're talking away. But like every herding dog I've ever met is reactive. Yeah. Um, not necessarily in the same way. It's not usually a fearful thing. There's a heck of a lot of them that want to chase anything that moves. Oh, yeah. gee, who encoded that in the herding dogs? Could it <laughs> be? Maybe. Um, so, yeah, we actually put that in there and, and we didn't encode an off switch. Yeah. So we get a lot of border collies that look super aggressive. They're not aggressive in that case. There right. can be some that and none of them are aggressive anyway, but there can be some border collies certainly that are afraid of other dogs, not border collies, but herding dogs. Um, you know, I've got a, I've got three dogs, three Aussies. One is truly reactive. She's afraid of all other dogs, including the other two in the house. You know that. So we live with that reactivity 24 seven. She cannot, they cannot be together, but yeah. the other two are reactive to everything on the planet too, just because they're Aussies. Yeah. And they're, oh my God, it's, it's a new recycling box. We need to bark at that. <laughs> you know? so, so, you know, it's some, with the herding dogs, it, it's hard to do, sometimes hard for people to distinguish whether it is reactivity and that they're afraid of something or they're just being a border collie that yeah. hasn't got enough chance to hurt oh, something. Yeah, so. and I think that um, I mean with the working dogs, <clears throat> I mean I know herding dogs because that's what I have as well. But I know other people with working dogs that get this way as well. They get reactive. They bark at every little noise, every little bump, every person walking by from in the house. Um, it's much worse when they don't have any kind of activity. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes the, the reactivity is not reactivity. Yeah. It's, it's boredom. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. need to, and I you think we, we talked about some of this in the live we did before this, we were talking about causes of reactivity. Yeah. Honest to God for fresh, like our whole um, civilized way of life is frustrating for dogs. Absolutely. Um, you no, know, I spend all my time in games trying to talk people into 10 foot leashes hmm. because the minute you put a dog on a six foot leash and they want to go sniff, they're already pulling and the puppies are already pulling. If they want to go look at something new in, in, in life, yeah. they're already pulling and then the people are pulling back and then everybody's frustrated and upset. And so many people have said to me, wow, giving them an extra even four feet of line makes yeah. so much difference in our walk. So, yeah. so, you know, all dogs are kind of frustrated to start. They have to be, it's like taking your kid out to Disneyland, right. And seeing them on a bench and saying, there's Mickey mouse over there, but you can't go meet Mickey mouse. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. So of course, or even, even people who remember three years back when we were all in our houses and couldn't leave. Exactly. Everybody was stir crazy. Yeah. Now everybody, people are still screaming about their rights. Um, <laughs> You know, we never. Oh no, I know, I know. I live half an hour from Parliament Building. <laughs> We're not fixing them, um, but I think I think there's so much, and and then as you pointed out, the whole let's buy a working dog or a herding dog, but let's not give them enough enrichment and species specific, you know, activities to indulge in, and think they're supposed to spend eight hours a day in the house. So there's frustration there yep. and pent up energy. So there are million reasons for I think leash reactivity that are not 
totally obvious to everybody right. other than fear and frustration. But you have to look at a lot of the underlying causes of both the fear and the frustration because there's yep. a lot of causes for them. So, But, but ultimately, yeah. the games work in every one of those scenarios. Yes, yes. Um, fortunately, we've got a system where we can counter condition and teach alternative behaviors and yep. this is both fear or frustration. But uh, having said that again, I will tweak that depending on whether it's frustration or fear. Yeah. And so that's I, why you need a trainer. Yeah. Oh, I gave Buck something the other night but <clears throat> when I it was falling apart and I gave him the activity to try to totally work for him. Mm -hmm. I would never have done it with a fearful dog. Okay. Buck's fearful. He's just frustrated. So yeah. you have to really know what you're doing sometimes because you can mess that up big time. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So we could probably talk for another hour, but we'll stop I now. Know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sally says she's in. She All right. Program. Game All right. Program. Well, of course she's in. She, I'm not giving her. I know. <laughs> it's coming soon. It's coming I want. Soon. I want to see photos. Yes. Sally. Yes. yes. We will go. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you, everybody. If you were listening, I would appreciate that. And um, maybe give some, give everybody something to think about. And um, Celeste, thank you for joining us. And so, Penny, oh, wait, just before, yeah, Penny, <laughs> just before you go, how do they find your new course if they're interested? Oh, um, I'll post it. The, well, okay. So all I've done right now is put, I put a video up and um, on YouTube, I'll put the link in the comments. And it explains pretty much what we explained today. And it, it talks about everything that's included in the program and the price. And just to be honest, people are kind of gulping at the price, but um, I am still probably the least expensive trainer around because <laughs> I checked out everybody else. And, and I think it's, I, you know, it's, it's a private it's a one fair price. To most program. I think it's fair. Yes. It is a fair price. Yes. So anyway, um, it's all there. I'll put the link in the uh, comment section and people, if anybody's listening and they want to talk about their dog and how it would work for their dog or want more information on the program, um, just send me, um, send me a, an email or text through our, um, our, website has a contact page just send me something through there i get those and i'd be happy to set up a one-to-one -to, -one mm -hmm. to talk about it okay all right thanks the last it was fun <laughs> how much snow did you get quickly you know what we hardly got anything last night oh that's good yeah that's good so you just have the previous 40 inches that's oh good. it's a ridiculous amount well hopefully it'll be okay today too so <laughs> thanks guys we'll hopefully be back next week oh. if anybody has as soon as I say thank you, that's it. I heard it, I know. <laughs> Suggestions, we'd be happy to do a live on anything you want to hear. I got to go now. Thanks. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.